So let's look at what the Benedict's test is for reducing sugars. So monosaccharides and some disaccharides are reducing sugars. Their presence in a solution can be detected by the Benedict's test. Stage one, Benedict's solution contains copper sulfate, sodium citrate and sodium carbonate. So the Cu2 plus ions give it a clear blue color. Usually two centimeters cubed Benedict's is added um, to two centimeters of the solution. So let's do that. Stage two. You heat it in a water bath at around about 85 degrees Celsius. Um, and if the reducing sugar is there, such as glucose, then the Cu2 plus ions are reduced to Cu plus ions in the form of copper oxide, which forms a brick red precipitate. Stage three, the color of the precipitate indicates the relative concentration of redu reducing sugar. So a clear blue color is a negative result, but a non-reducing sugar may be present. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So you can see uh, low is green, medium orange, high is uh, brick red. Now, if you did get a negative result, then you need to check whether you have a non-reducing sugar. So sucrose is a non-reducing sugar and can be hydrolyzed into glucose and fructose by first adding dilute hydrochloric acid. So we need to break the bonds. So stage five, it's boiled. Okay, so we're gonna boil it up first of all. And then after we've boiled it, we're gonna be neutralizing the acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate as the Benedict's tests won't operate unless it's a neutral pH. So here we go, sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then I'll add some Benedict's. So once the Benedict solution is added, the sample is put back into the water bath at 85 degrees Celsius. And if uh, the reducing sugars are there, uh, then it will change color. So it now contains reducing sugar. And as you can see, it is a high concentration. Okay, hope you found that useful. That is the Benedict's test for reducing and non-reducing sugars. I'll see you soon.